Hey everybody, thank you for joining me today on the Pound for Pound Leader Podcast. You know, in this episode, I wanna share with you a leadership teaching that I did for a young professional leadership network that serves the Salvation Army and the local communities called Echelon. I shared this teaching with them back in October, but I believe it's more relevant than ever, especially since so much has happened since then. I talk about what is needed to weather the times we live in, how to have continued success in whatever industry that you work in. So check out my time with the Salvation Army Hawaii chapter called Echelon. I love entrepreneurs, I love business people, and I, I, I wish I had something like this when I was younger. Um, you know, I think what we do together is, even though I'm, I'm considered clergy, um, at the same time, I really believe that you have an anointing and a God-called gift on your life to lead in the professional world. Um, if you've have ever heard of the Seven Mountains or the Seven Gates, probably made made famous by people like Lance Walnow or people like... Uh, Ed Savoso or different people. Um, that's what you do. I have a admiration and somewhat of an envy that you get to be in the marketplace and you get to not be of the world, but be in the world and reaching people for Jesus. You are influencing influencers where you are right now. So we all are in the same boat together. Um, I see myself as a pastorpreneur and some of you are entrepreneurs. And we're all called to be kings and priests, right? Right, all of us. So we don't turn off our Christianity, our faith. We actually, God has given us and you and myself a platform in your business and in your whatever you do for a living, whatever you do to influence the world. He's given that to you because he wants to change the world in you and through you. So again, it's an honor and I'm so excited to be here. Now, I began thinking about this. What would I share with you guys that would, Bring some level of encouragement, um, inspiring that comes from God. The word inspire actually means theos and pneuma put together, which means God breathe, theos, theos, theos. So when we called our church Inspire Church and changed it from Hope Chapel, West Oahu, it wasn't because we were looking for a cool name. It just made sense, the breath of God. I wanted people to feel when they came into our church, they felt the breath of God. When they were in a worship service, they felt God breathe on them. And so really, hopefully I'm bringing you an encouraging word and hopefully God breathes on this. I'm not going to take long. I just wanted to share a few things that were really on my mind. First of all, I want to say that we started off small. And the reason why I want you to know that is what you're looking at is 19 years of steady plotting. The Bible says in Proverbs, it says this, Proverbs 21.5 says, steady plotting brings prosperity. Steady plotting brings prosperity. So in other words, it's the hard work. It's the steady one step after the other. You know, one of the greatest missionaries, not, not just Mr. Booth, um, William Booth, but also one of the great missionaries and the founder of the modern missionary movement. His name, was, his name was William Carey. And William said this. They said, William, what credentials do you have? Uh, where did you go to seminary? Uh, w- tell us what you can do. There's nothing, nothing impressive about you. And he said, one thing I can do. And he said, what can you do? He says, I can plod. I can plod. And as a result of William Carey going into China, steady plodding brings prosperity. He started the modern missions movement that you and I enjoy today. You know, it doesn't matter where you start. Maybe right now you might be feeling like you've been downsized. Maybe you've been feeling like your business has taken a step back. Maybe you feel like you should be in a much better, different place today than you were pre-COVID. Maybe for you, COVID, before COVID came, that you were sailing, you were you had momentum, you were smoking it, you were crushing it, you were savage, you don't talk about, you are everything. And then all of a sudden, a disruption like COVID takes place, you get interrupted, and now you find yourself struggling. Maybe you find yourself wrestling with what are you going to do with your business, or are you going to stay in Hawaii, or what are you going to do moving forward? I can tell you this, I wanted to share with you five things that will help you, hopefully they help you. Uh, to be able to weather this time because this too shall pass. The first one is this. Number one, I want you to remember that everything starts small. Everything starts small. Rarely do you ever inherit something massive unless it's generational. So if you're starting small, nothing wrong with that. Because here's why. Because, because the Bible says, do not despise this day, this day of small beginnings. 
because the Lord delights to see the work begin. So if you uh, have a small dream, no problem. God can take that dream, ideate it, make it bigger than ever before. Uh, if you, like us, we had a small building, but a big dream. You know what I'm talking about? Small building, big dreams. So here I am in my White Kelly Shopping Center office. We don't own it. We will in one day in Jesus' name. I believe by faith. And I remember driving by this thing, and I was in the very hot White Kelly Elementary School. Now, I don't know if you know it, but it was a brand new school. But for some reason, some engineer, DAGs, whatever, decided that, they, that, the, that the cafeteria did not need air conditioning. I can tell you, everything had air conditioning except the cafeteria. Well, that's all we had. When I took over in 2001, we had 40 people, 40 people, and we grew kind of quick, and for, but we stalled and we stopped. And guess what? It was hot. As a matter of fact, it was so hot that it was like an emu. I called it an emu. It was an underground oven of a church. People were sweating in my church. Nobody wanted to come to our church. I was like, why? What's wrong with us? There's nothing wrong with us. And, but you know what? They wanted to go to all the churches that had air conditioning. So I would always be upset that we had no air conditioning. I'd be, I'd always look over at the other side of the fence and the grass is always greener. I'd be disappointed. I couldn't preach like Wayne Cordero. Pastor Wayne's one of my heroes. I came from Ralph Moore, but I wanted, everybody wanted to be like Wayne. He could communicate. He could sing. He had the Aloha shirts. He looked handsome. You know, he paddled canoe. And I, and I realized that I'm not Wayne Cordero. And when somebody said, Mike, be yourself, be your own best you. And I started to realize that God delighted to see the work begin. It doesn't matter. Some of you have had to downsize. Some of you have to move with your parents. Some of you have had to, you had big plans for your business. Uh, you wanted to expand, but now you, that's on hold for now. Maybe, maybe. But I want you to know this. Do not despise the day of small beginnings because the Lord delights to see the work begin. I would drive by this White Hiller shopping center and the building that we now occupy, it was just a dream. We didn't have any, we didn't have much money. But steady plotting brings prosperity. I would drive by that building on my way to the hot White Kelly elementary, elementary School. Did I tell you guys it was hot? I did, right? It was hot. I would drive by every day. I'd yell at that building. That's my building in Jesus' name. And roll up my Honda Element window and keep on driving to my church and go to the reality. The reality was a very hot, very small elementary school cafeteria. I did that for seven years. That's my building in Jesus' name. That's my building in Jesus' name. I would drive by it. Sometimes the lights were on. They were closed. Nobody was in here. It was originally a sure save or a, a sack and save. Sack and save. Foodland sack and save. And then after that, it turned into an Ashley Furniture Home Store. It got repurposed into an Ashley Furniture Home Store. Well, Ashley Furniture Home Store pulled out during the global pandemic. I mean, the global financial crisis. They pulled out. This building was empty for two years. I would always look at it. I'd drive by it. I'd yell at it. It's my building in Jesus' name. And I'd go back to my reality. Well, I did something. I did something that was crazy. I would sit in the parking lot and I would eat lunch and I'd look at that building. So that's my building. There are times I was so discouraged, I wouldn't even look at the building. I would drive by and I wouldn't even look at it on the way to the exit to get to White Kelly. God did something amazing. We, we had grown. Uh, we went from small to medium, and then all of a sudden, I guess the parable of the talents comes into play, right? If you're faithful in the little, God will put you in charge of many. And so we were faithful with 40 people. We were faithful with the building that we had. We were faithful with taking care of it. We, had, we were renters, but we had owner's mentality. That's a big difference. Um, and then one day, I reached out to the owner who lived in San Diego. I found his address. I sent him a Hawaiian gift basket with cookies and chocolates. And if there was chocolate back then, I would have, I would have bought that, but I bought whatever I could. I put a DVD, okay. DVD. That's a long time ago, made a DVD with me with a Starbucks cup of coffee standing in front of his building. I said, Mr. Ernest Rady from San Diego, from American assets. My name's Mike Kai. You don't know me. Got music playing in the background. I said, I'm standing in front of your building. Your building is empty right now, but it could be filled. And I would love to rent it. I have all these community leaders on the video. They'd all speak. Uh, this council, this council member, I had this senator, I had this business person, this community leader, and then got back up to me. I said, well, Mr. Rady, if there's any chance I could own this, I mean, rent this building or own this building from you, I'd love to. Two months later, the manager calls, says, oh, can I speak to Michael Kai? I said, you're speaking to him. She says, this is so-and-so from the White Kelly Shopping Center. I said, hi, how are you? She says, I'm doing great. She goes, tell me, can you afford it? <laughs> and honestly, we couldn't. But I said, yes, of course we can. I'm prophesying in Jesus' name. Of course we can. And she says, 
She goes, really? You can afford it? I said, of course we can. Of course, because I'm thinking, I'm praying scriptures. My father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Of course he can, I can afford it in the spirit. And she says, well, we're busy. Um, we don't really want a church there, so we'll contact you later. Let's fast forward six months later. Six months later, I'm standing in front of this building, but there was a store called Stephen Barry's right next door. Stick with me. Stephen Barry's was like a, a lower end Banana Republic Gap, lower than Gap. So it was lower, not Banana, lower Gap. Gap. So they had Sarah Jessica Parker as one of their representatives, Laird Hamilton, this great surfer, Stefan Marbury, and they sold their own lines for these guys in this one store called Stephen Barry's. Well, they opened up at the Comp USA next door, and I opened up the paper, and it said, "It said Stephen Barry is going bankrupt." I close the paper. I look at my wife. I said, "Babe, I'll be right back." So I go to Stephen Barry's. I drive over there. Okay, all right. So I walk in, wondering if that's one of the stores that's going to close because they're going to close two thousand stores nationwide. And I walk in. And I said, "Hi, how are you guys doing?" And I'm looking at clothes. Good. Can I try help you with anything? I said, "I'm so sorry. I heard you guys going to close." He says, no, no, our store is going to be open. And I felt so bad that I did that because I was trying to get some insider information that I bought a shirt, I bought a pair of pants and I walked out. That was my guilt offering for the business. My wife goes, oh, any, any excuse to buy clothes, right? You, right. So I walk out, guys, but check this out. I turn to my left and I'm now looking at the Ashley Furniture Home Store that's now empty, that used to be sack and safe, that might one day be Inspire Church. Over there, I see somebody working on the door. I'd never seen the door open before. Never in seven years seen a door open here. And I walked up to the door and I see this guy fixing the door. He's fixing the door. And I'm like, brother, what are you doing? He goes, I'm fixing the door. And I said, can I come in and have a look? He goes, no. I said, no, brother. I just want to walk right in. See, I used to shop here. Let me just come inside and look. He goes, no, can't let you do that. I said, come on, man. Do I look like I was uh, like I would rob you? He, he paused, everybody. He paused. I said, come on, bro. I just, I'm interested in renting this place. You know, I'm like, he goes, all right. All right. And I walked up right up to the entrance. I said, right here. Like where, like he could see me. He didn't trust me. And I'm looking at him I'm like right here. I'm like 10 feet in. And the light changed because my light, my eyes got adjusted to the darkness because they didn't have all the lights on. And I looked and I don't know. I, and, and I don't know how you feel, but I, I, I prayed in the spirit. If you know what that means. I'm sure you do. And I walk away. I go, Thanks, brother. I got to go. And I walked to my car and the guy yells at me. He goes, Hui. I go, what? He goes, the boss is coming back. He just went to lunch. You can come back. I say, oh, I got an appointment. I got to go. And I get into the car and he yells at me again. And there was the boss. The boss showed up. The guy who was running the whole building for the, for the owner. And I looked at him and I said, brother, is this thing for rent? He goes, oh, yes, brother. We're hurting. We would love to rent. It. Oh, here's the number. Here's who you call. That's how we got it. We started small, but we had big dreams. Right now, don't dumb down the size of your dreams to the size of the economy. Don't dumb it down. Dream big. I'm born and raised in Hawaii. I'm a local boy. My graduating class was 120. I don't have a pedigree that I wish I had. It was just me. It was me and God. You know what I'm saying? I had, my brothers went to Kamehameha. They were boarders. I didn't want to go because I was a mama's boy. I didn't want to leave my mom. I stayed on the big island and I graduated in class 120. What number was I in my class? I think I was 75. <laughs> number 75. But it doesn't matter because number one, don't be afraid to start small. Number two, write this down. Stay even keeled. Stay even keeled. It's so easy right now to get tossy turvy with the waves and that's going on right now. Stay even keeled. You know, every boat, um, older boats, what would happen? So if you had a boat and you had a sailboat and you would sail the ocean blue and you would like Columbus and you went wherever you needed to go. But the most important thing was that in order for the boat not to capsize, it needed to have ballast stones on the bottom. The ballast stones were really, really heavy and you would carry the ballast stones into the hold or the hull of the ship, and that would allow that particular ship not to flip when the waves came or not to flip when the winds blew because it had enough ballast in its hold in our order for it to stay even keeled. Don't allow the times of this life right now to get you to lose your balance and stay off kilter. Don't, your time with Jesus is important. 
your time with the Lord, reading of the word. Don't let the, your social media grab you and drag you and your attention away in the morning when, man, if you could get a couple of scriptures in, if you could get a couple of chapters in, if you could spend a little bit more time with the Lord, you can stay even keeled. You know, your emotions can inform you. Write this down. Your emotions can inform you, but you cannot, them, cannot let them lead you. Your emotions during a time like this can inform you, but you cannot let your emotions lead you. Number two, you stay even keeled. Number three, number three, you got to stay in the spirit. You got to stay in the spirit. When you are staying in the spirit, um, you have to stay in the spirit because if you allow yourself, uh, I allow myself during times like this to act out in the flesh, to, to be frustrated, to be um, ruled by, again, ruled by my, my emotions, then I'm going to make um, bad decisions. I'm going to feel weaker physically. I'm going to lose strength because now more than ever, we need to fight off discouragement. Because right now you could be, you could receive discouraging news or everything that you're watching around you is discouraging, discouraging what's happening to the nation, the, the unity that is gone pretty much, um, all, everything that's going on. You have to be able to strengthen yourself. And I love it because in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, it says that David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. David strengthened him. If you remember the story, his men were talking about stoning him. Now, this is David who raised these mighty men in the caves of Adullam, who be, began to take on the destitute, the discouraged, the distraught, um, the discontented men of, of life who came and found him. And he was their hero. And all of a sudden, because something bad really happened, now all of them want to stone David and they want to kill him. But the Bible says what David did, David was alone by himself. And it says that he strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. And there's going to be times there's nobody going to be there to give you a pep talk. No, you, you're not going to find the right podcast. You're not going to find the, next, the, the best worship song that's going to do it. After a while, this is how I fight my battles. Are you tired of that song? Whatever it is, there's going to be a moment and a time that you got to strengthen yourself in the Lord your God. Maybe you got to look at yourself in the mirror and you got to say some great things to yourself. Maybe you need to start writing down on your mirror with a pen. I write down on my mirror in my bathroom on my mirror. I write stuff. I write goals. I write scripture. I write reminders. And when I'm brushing my teeth, I'm looking at that thing. And you know what? That I'm a, the first thing that I'm going to come into my head is going to be when I'm looking at that mirror. I'm going to look at that mirror and go, bro, you need some help. You got some wrinkles right there, but that's okay. We got some cream for that. But brother, you're going to be strong in the Lord's grace. You're going to walk, you're going to walk by faith and not by sight. Those are the kind of things that you got to strengthen yourself in the Lord your God. Because man, I tell you right now, the devil's already send, sending us messages. Uh, the media is already sending us messages. We're bombarded constantly by negative messages and spiritual attack. And you have to strengthen yourself in the Lord, your God. Number one, don't be afraid to start small. Number two, stay even keeled. Number three, stay in the spirit. And here's number four. Number four, stay focused. Stay focused. It's so easy to get sidetracked. So easy to be able to lose your focus over what your main call and your main job is right now. Whatever you're doing it, do it all for God's glory. Whatever you're doing, you're doing it unto the Lord. Now, I used to work at American Airlines. I was on the ramp. I was on the ramp. And I remember that long time ago, I got stuck in Hilo. My flight benefits, I was, I was standby. I couldn't get out. And uh, this is before I, 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 I came to the Lord. This is before I met Lisa. And I'm sitting in Hilo Airport. And then there's this lady next to me. And apparently, she's a non-rev passenger, like, just like myself working for uh, American Airlines. And she, um, I asked her, I said, so what do you do? She goes, uh, I'm, a, I'm a flight attendant. And I, I was like, wow, I, I just work on the ramp. And she didn't like the way I said it. Like, I was like, I just, I just work on the ramp. You know, I, I throw bags. That's what I do. I don't literally didn't throw bags, guys. I lifted the bags, put the bags in. But that's what we, we said. We just toss bags. We never toss bags. I said, I, 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 throw, I, I work on the ramp. She goes, no, uh-uh. She was a Christian. She goes, you don't just work on the ramp. You work on the ramp for Jesus. She literally did one of these before these were even popular. She did the whole, you don't just, you don't just work on the ramp. You work on the ramp for Jesus. And I went like, that's right. I work on the ramp for Jesus. I work for God. I'm, he's using me on the ramp to reach these guys for the Lord. 
And at that moment, God helped me to stay focused. And even though I felt like, do not despise the day of small beginnings, I was looking down at my life. I was looking down. I should be doing better than this. And you know what? I knew I should have been doing better than this, but this is where I was at this time. And God gave me focus. One of the best things I learned that can distract you is comparison. And like I said, we always look over the grass is greener on the other side. Wow, they must have it better over there. Wow, they must be doing better in that state. Wow, they must, they must be get, get treated better by their bosses. Maybe I should go work there. Hmm. You know, the grass is always greener on the other side. I don't know if you remember, but years ago, and I'm almost done, years ago, the University of Hawaii, when Coach June Jones was a coach, when we were really, 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 really good. Some of you are too young to remember, but they were really good. And we would play at Fresno State. And Fresno State was the arch enemy of the University of Hawaii. And their coach was Pat Hill. Pat Hill looked like a biker. He looked like he came out of, you know what I'm saying, Texas Roadhouse or something. You know, he had, he had a handlebar mustache, Fu Manchu. And he had his baseball cap. And he had a scowl and he walked up and down. He would, yell at the, you know, he would yell at the referees like no coach has ever yelled at the referees in Hawaii. And we were rivals, like rivals. And Fresno State was so good then, just like UH. They would play anybody, anytime, any place. That was their motto. Anybody, anytime, any place, we'll go. We, we have, have football game, we'll travel. So Alabama, number one team in the nation, fly to Alabama, play Alabama, give them a hard time, almost win. Go to, go to USC, different conference. Drive down all the way to USC from Fresno State Valley. Coming down from the valley. Play USC. Beat USC. Come back. No problem. Anybody, anytime, any place. They did that in Michigan. They did that to Ohio State. They were on a run for about five years. Finally, all, everybody's trying to get him to come to their program. Hey, coach, you're at a, mid, you're at a mid-major program. Not a small program, but a mid-major program. You ever thought about be, playing in the BCS? You want to play in a bigger bigger conferences. You want to play for bigger schools with bigger budgets and nicer facilities. He says, you ever thought about if the grass is always greener on the other side? He goes, you know what? It's interesting. And he quoted him in the Hawaii newspaper. In the Hawaii newspaper, cut it out. He says, you know, everybody says that the grass is greener on the other side. He goes, I just figured, listen to this. I'll make my own grass green. I'll make my own grass green. What do you need to do to make your grass green? What do you need to do to make your own grass green? Grow your own great staff members. Invest in other people. Um, get that facility. Make the, maximize the usage of your facility right now if you own a business before you start thinking of a bigger one. Maybe not yet. Maybe it is here. I want to I give you three, three things with that. Number three things. If you're going to get something and make your own grass green, you better remember, number one, is it suitable? Is it suitable for you? Is it a suitable location? Maybe it's too big. Maybe just scale it down just a little. Don't dumb it down, but scale it down. Number one, is it suitable? Number two, is it scalable? Can, is it scalable? Can you build on this? Can you build on this? Can you boutique on another island with somebody you trust? Or can you find another boutique spot in another cool spot on the island where, man, your store would fit there? Is it suitable? Is it scalable? Can you duplicate and replicate what you're doing in culture and in attitude that when they walk into your store in one place, they feel like they walked into the same one. It's just a little bit different because of the places where the building that it's in. Number three, is it sustainable? Is it sustainable? Can you sustain that? Can you sustain that growth? Can you sustain that business? Who are you training up right now that one day when you want to go jump on that opportunity because their opportunities are coming somebody's going to close. I hate to say it. Not you guys. Some big box is going to, some big box is, is not going to survive this. And then there's going to be space to rent. There's going to be stuff on the market. And are you ready now? Are you ready now? Or can you get ready financially to get solvent enough that when that opportunity comes, that opportunity knocks on your door, you open that door and God says, this is the door I have for you. Is it suitable? Is it scalable? And is it sustainable? And I leave you with this. We were going after 10 acres of land, 10 acres of land, everybody. That's big. In Kalailoa, right down there. Kalailoa, outside my window. H1's right there. Kalailoa is over there. And we had been working on this and they approached us. They found us. And there was a two-year courtship of basically 
um, doing everything that we needed to do. It was, it seemed like this was all God seemed like it was all God. This is the way that it happened. But then, uh, they had a new CEO and the new CEO came, decides that they're going to push out the other guy or not CEO, uh, number three guy, excuse me, pushes out the other guy, the guy that was working with us for two years. And I meet the guy that they're about to push out for lunch at the Pacific club for breakfast. And he's looking at me. We wait 30 minutes for one of his partners to show up. The partner doesn't show up. And finally, I know something's up. And I go, why'd you bring me here? What's going on? He goes, well, I'm here to bring you the bad news that uh, we decided that we're going to scrap the plans for Kalai Loa, start all over again. And we're going to return your deposit money to you. I was like, that's it? That's it. Really? Yes. The old me would have been upset. I mean, you wasted two years of my time. All our due diligence, all our studies, all some money that we put into this, and you return my deposit back. But now you're telling me that bye-bye and we got nothing else for you? Because yeah, I'm sorry, basically, that's what I'm saying. The Lord told me, don't worry. Don't look at him. Look around him. Look around him. Because if you get your heart right, and here's number five, stay gold. Okay, pony boy, stay gold. If you never watched The Outsiders, you have no idea what I'm talking about. But anyway, 1983, 1984, never mind. I'm just showing my age. Stay gold, pony boy. If you keep your heart right, scrub your heart. Because everything you do flows from your heart. And if you keep your heart right, like I did before, Mike, look behind him because I got another deal coming to you if you keep your heart right. And you know what he did? I'm ending with this. I might have gone a little bit long and I apologize, but here it is. Unless you say, please, Mike, no, don't stop. Keep going. I'll keep going. But if you don't, never mind. I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to stop. I'm just playing. I'm just messing with you guys. So the Lord said, look around him. November, almost one year ago, I sent an email to a big time developer in Honolulu. I said, hi, this just happened. I was wondering if you got anything for us in Kapolei. Sends me an email the next day. In 40 days, we close the entire deal of land. Smaller, not 10 acres, barely three. But now I look at this economy, it's definitely more suitable. It definitely is scalable. And it's definitely more sustainable right now. Am I glad I didn't buy 10 acres of land? Yes, I am. Because you know what we would have been paying? 10 acres of land. Now we don't pay... We pay a lot less. We have land. Are we going to build yet? We're taking a wait and see approach. We definitely are, but we're going to wait and see when we do it. Because I think there's going to be opportunity in Honolulu. I think there's going to be opportunity in Kahala area, Mo'ili Ili area. I think opportunity is going to come at something more suitable for us, something that is scalable for us and something that's sustainable. But you have to keep your heart right. Because you're going to face a lot of disappointment. Bank's going to tell you no. Landlord's going to say something. Something's going to happen. But if you keep your heart right, God always brings more opportunities for people whose hearts are not bitter because, because of what's going on, but become better and are encouraged in the Lord and move on and don't stop in the name of Jesus. Hey everybody, well I hope you enjoyed that leadership teaching I did with the aspiring young leaders of Echelon. You know, I had a great time sharing with them and I hope this will help you in your career as you seek to thrive in these times. Hey, get ready everyone because we have our next pound for pound leadership summit in Asia coming up on March 6th. So stay tuned for more details on how and where and uh, how to get yourself registered. So follow me on Instagram at Mike Kai or visit our website at MikeKai.tv. So stay informed. And if you're looking for something to help strengthen the leadership of your team in this new year, then we've got the solution for you. So pick up the leadership edition of my book, The Pound for Pound Principle, and couple it with the Masterclass digital course. And this leadership content may be just what you and your team needs to go to the next level. You know, you can pick it up today at MikeKai.tv. And thanks for joining me on the podcast for the Pound for Pound Leader Podcast. And until then, until next time, aloha.